Hello Enchanted Ones, and a blessed spring to you all. This week, join me as I make spring DIYs, all inspired by the secret garden. Share with you my new altar and the mysteries it holds as I try to unlock the secrets it possesses. So sit back, relax, and join me for a very special video. Hello Enchanted One, thank you so much for joining me. I need a bookmark for this book, but I'll just remember where I came from. I'm reading The Secret Garden and this book means so much to me and I'm sure it does to you too, as well as the films. Each year in the woods, I'm taken on this journey, much like Mary did in The Secret Garden. And this week, I'm so excited to share with you the story that has been the truth of the past two weeks. It has been my quest these past few weeks to embrace the beginning of spring with the DIYs, but also finding some beautiful places within the woods. And it all starts with a key. Also, it starts with my new altar that was given to me from my beloved grandma and granddad. The story begins in late winter, when a girl named Alwyn was gifted a gift from her late grandmother. The gift was an old bureau, one that had seen many centuries pass, and it held energy and magic and Alwyn felt drawn to it through a similar symbol, coincidentally, that her antique necklace possessed. Alwyn decided to replace her altar space with this bureau as she wanted its energy to continue on. It felt as if it was the last piece to the puzzle she was longing for. However, upon opening the drawers, she found something. of sorts. It was old and dusty. But what did this key once unlock? Was it the bureau? No. Perhaps a door of some sorts. Perhaps this key unlocked a hidden door covered in ivy and moss. Perhaps it was once a key to somewhere sacred. But now Alwyn will never know. But the great thing is, Alwyn can only Imagine. It reminded Alwyn of a book that she loved so dearly. This key could potentially be a key to a secret garden, but she didn't know where it was, and she didn't have a lock. But that was no problem for Alwyn, because if she didn't have a lock, then she'd just have to make one. My imagination saw this keyhole on a book that looked identical to a wooden, ivy-covered secret gate, just like the one in the secret garden. And I also needed a book to plan an enchanted wedding in, so I came up with quite the idea. The background of the book would be wooden planks, like that of a wooden gate. So to achieve this, I used foam. I drew plank sizes to fit the size of the book and then cut them out using a crafting knife and cutting board. The foam wasn't the same length as the book, so I had to puzzle the pieces together. Making the edges of each plank not too straight and quirky looking. One you can peep through and see the wonders of the garden before you open it. After I glued all planks down, I drew and then cut out a keyhole shape with the crafting knife before the glue dried underneath. But I had no idea why I decided 
it would be in between two planks of wood but there you go <laughs> now there was one thing the background was missing and that was texture what I love about crafting foam is that you can manipulate it to have texture with a crafting knife I first cut into it making deeper crevices and then I went back and made smaller lines following the grains direction but also twisting it to mold with the deeper lines and after a long while it was complete and worth it Next, I decided to make this keyhole look extra fancy, so I drew a scale mock-up of what I wanted it to look like, which was an enchanting lock that was unusually extravagant for a garden gate. And then, using self-drawing clay, I went in and moulded each piece to the scale on the drawing. And afterwards, using glue, I simply transferred it onto the book. And after a bit of a therapeutic process, it looked like the antique keyhole of dreams. I then waited for this to dry overnight and it was time to make it look realistic. I first started by painting the entirety of the background this deep brown colour, diluting it with water so the crevices I'd created in the foam would stand out more. After that, I went in with black to add definition to the edges of the wood and in between the slats. I also dry brushed the planks so the ridges would pick up on the darker tones to make it look more realistic. For the lock in the middle, I first painted it a gold colour, but then quickly realised that this looked too new. So I went over it in black to make it appear rustic and old, like it had been left untouched for centuries. In the book, and my version, this lock was hidden by overgrown ivy, and there are so many ways that you can recreate this. I decided to use some decorative ivy that had lying around the house. I cut two pieces to the length of the book and placed them either side of the lock, carefully gluing them on, trying my best to make sure no glue was exposed. This looked great, although the ivy looked a bit basic, with no real depth or tones, so I painted the stems brown to give it more dimension and finally dry brush the leaves to create a gradient look. And the secret garden book was complete. Now I had created this beautiful enchanting book. It was time to see if there was magic that lied within. Could this key really unlock it? And where did it lead to? time for Alwyn to disappear? But where to? Alwyn found herself within the enchanted woods. She found herself down a familiar path, the healing trail, a path she has wandered many times before. However, she knew in her heart that she needed to venture out to find this hidden garden. Let's see what birds, what insects, what creatures, what trees call me today. She wandered along the path, led by the bird calls, the spring buds, and the wind which picked up quite swiftly. Oh, a big bumbly bee out of hibernation, and I'm going to follow him. She followed a bee until she found some new spring life. See that down there? That is the makings of a beautiful foxglove and past many beautiful looking nooks. But however beautiful, Alwyn's soul knew to go on further. She found herself crossing the main path to a familiar place named the Wise Ones. 
This place held ancient yew tree stumps as well as green signs of spring. She saw a robin in the distance and walked over to it. The robin flew down the very path she had ventured to a few weeks prior and a place that she named the heart of the forest. It is full of whimsical, mossy moments, and Arwen truly feels at home here. However, it can't be here, Arwen thought. Surely it has to be somewhere different. So she ventured on further down the path, and crossed over the silvery stream where she was led down a darker path. Okay, in all seriousness now, I do not know where I'm going. <laughs> but I am going down that darker trail and we're gonna see what happens. I just heard an owl coo. It's midday. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> so we're gonna go explore and literally just see. Okay, there's a bit of a steep hill here. Like mossy, mossy here. I really lovely trees silver birch trees oh and look there's another trail there hmm okay oh cute there's like a little stumps over there birdies calling me that way so i have to go over these stepping stones Um, now I'm hearing birds coming from this direction. So where do I go? Where do I go? She followed a bird's nest high in a tree in the distance. Whatever's going on down in this bit looks very inviting. I'm going to go down there, I think. And then saw some beautiful mossy trees highlighted by the sun in the distance. To Owen's surprise, she was back at the heart of the forest. But this time she saw it in a whole new perspective as she was coming from the other side of the river. I'm back at the same place again, back. Well, <laughs> a distance even. She now truly felt in her heart that this was right. And this was her secret garden. I was thinking, wow, I found a new amazing place. Then I realized it's the same place as before. It's the heart of the forest, but from a different angle. But. <gasps> How beautiful does this look right now? Wow. Well, I guess this is the place then. This is an unusual tree. I like how it curves upwards. What does that remind you of? I love that. This place was ancient. It held so much moss and lichen and quirky trees that each held a story. The new life that was peeking through the old leaves from last year provided the perfect balance of old and new and reminded her of the spring equinox. But something caught Arlen's eye and it was just what she was longing for. A whimsical fairy portal. I'm a little gremlin coming out. So I've done a full circle back to this place but that's okay because I guess the woods is trying to tell me that this was my secret garden all along. I didn't need to search for a new one. This literally is my secret garden. Look at this moss. It's so beautiful. Look how this structure has formed in the woods through decay and this new life. It's just amazing. If I was a fairy, this would be my doorway. But next to the doorway is this kind of like raised bed moment, which I quite like. On second thought, do you think I was called here? by the fairies that belong to this little portal. Hmm. The door also has some holly growing out the top. I have already started on my next DIY, which is called a woodland moon gazer. And I've just made the skeleton of it, if you wish. And it was so easy to make, so I'll share how I made that with you now, but I'm going to collect some things from here so we can make our own secret garden on it. Do 
To create the basic skeleton of my version of a moon gazer, all you need are a few simple things. I found a few things that were lying around my craft supplies. To create the base, I needed cardboard, a large saucer and a smaller saucer, and from these I cut two circles of each out. I then stacked them all on top of each other, gluing them as I went. And to cover these I used felt, but you could use any fabric, gluing it down to create a cute little step, but the base of this miniature secret garden. The moon gazer will be this mini wreath which I glued in place adding little sticks to secure it each side. The circle is to represent the full moon and a portal to transfer you into another realm. But this sculpture was far from complete. I needed upon this moss, sticks, basically anything I could find to create my very own dream secret garden. So I collected what I could from within the woods and then journeyed back home. It was time to complete my woodland moon gazer, so as well as my collections from the wood, I got out all of my craft supplies as I didn't know what I would need. The theme of my moon gazer will be an ethereal and overgrown gazer. I found this vine bounded stick in the woods and I thought it would make a great swing, so I strung it up using only cotton and threaded it on. What the sculpture really needed though was moss. I wanted it to be dripping with the draped moss, looking like it was there for centuries. And I built this up with crafting moss so it would stay this beautiful green color forever. My portal also needed a pathway, which I made from the bark of an old oak tree, continuing the path on each side. I ran into a problem though with using real life-sized objects, as this was of course a miniature sculpture. So to make smaller debris, I broke up a larger fir cone and placed small pieces on whenever I needed to cover up any imperfections or glue. As well as moss, I added lichen to make it more ancient looking and finished it off by adding little moments of fallen mossy trees, ivy crawling up the leg and some final touches. I could have been here for hours and it's such a fun craft to do with friends. But now, the fairy's secret garden, with the inspiration from my very own secret garden, the heart of the forest, was complete. But there was one more DIY I wanted to craft, this one being quite easy and simple, and using what brought me on this journey in the first place, my grandparents' key. So sit back and relax whilst I craft to my new spring composition named The Secrets of an Equinox.
finally had a bookmark to keep my place in the book, but one that meant so much. I looked around and admired all of my creations that I have thoroughly enjoyed making over the past few weeks, and I'd love to know which one you love the most. It's amazing to know how much creativity can be unlocked by a simple key, a book and a bureau, but also with the beauty and healing feeling of spring's return within the woods. My woodland gazer will be a swing for my beautiful fairy. However, she presented something to me when she appeared. A key. But this time it was a different key. Although a little confused, I had an idea where this key was supposed to go to lock the bureau, to keep all of my precious things at my altar hidden and secret. This key, much like my grandma and granddad, will stay with me forever. And with the magic of this key, all I needed to do to go to my own secret garden is snap my fingers. Thank you for watching, Enchanted Ones. All my love, Arwen. Whatever I do, I can't overdo the key shots in this because all I want to do for some reason is just do shots of the keys. Um, oh dear. <laughs> Thank you.